Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at, a deeper look at, Illustrator CS5's new variable width tool, variable stroke width. So, if you've seen me uh, you know, show this kind of briefly before, maybe in the launch event, it's kind of just basically looking at these three faces here, which all look like they're at different stages of design. It looks like this is the beginning, that one's kind of a little bit more defined, and then this one is kind of almost done or done. Well, actually, if I go to Outline View, we can just quickly see that these are really all three of the same exact faces. The thing that makes them look different is the fact that they were used or created with the variable width tool. So let me give you a quick walkthrough on that. We'll just zoom into this one right here. We'll go ahead and grab the new width tool. And the width tool uh, detects paths anywhere that you hover over it. So it, it doesn't have to be a closed path. It doesn't have to be an open path. Basically, any path will work. The minute you click and drag, it will create a width point with the same equal distance on both sides. So that's the point in the middle, and then it created the same distance on the left and right side of that point. So let's undo that for a second, because you have some options. If you hold down the Option or Alt key, then you're varying the width only on one side of the point. The other point or other side does not change. So this is great in situations where you need to make one part of the stroke thicker or taller than the rest of it. And again, you can add as many of these variable width points as you need to get the look and feel that you're trying to accomplish. All right, so now that we've done that, how can we take this a step further? Let's, let's, see, let's learn a couple new things. So up at the top here, you'll notice that it's kind of keeping track of my variable widths because now the variable widths themselves can have profiles. So for example, I'm gonna go up to a, a new area here. We'll just change our view to this uh, scene of the jet stream, the plane with the jet stream. All right, so this is just two straight paths following this jet up here in the upper right-hand corner. What I wanna do is select one of those paths all right, and just point out that it is just a simple path. And now when I grab the uh, width tool, I can go ahead and just simply start dragging the variable width points along that path. Now, again, I can hold down my Option or Alt key to vary the width on one side or the other. And I can uh, make that width skinnier or thicker or thinner, depending on what I want as I drag. All right, so now I've got that in place. We'll go back to our selection tool and select it. And now that it's selected as a path again, I can add that to my profiles. So I can just go ahead and click the Save or Add to Profile button, and then it'll let me name it. So I'm gonna call this Jet Stream 2, because I already did one. All right, so now that I've done that, I can now apply that profile to other strokes that I want to have the same kind of variable width. Now, right off the bat, it's not gonna look like it's doing anything, and that's where, why, why you need to understand that the widths or the strokes themselves are different weights. So this one it has a stroke weight of 0 0.0455, but if I select the other one, it only has a weight of 0 0.0139. So even if I apply the exact same profile to it, there is my new Jetstream 2 profile, it doesn't really look like much happened, where in, effect, in fact, it did happen. It's just that the stroke is so thin, you can't see it. So I can either uh, click to bring up the stroke panel and change it that way, or I can do it right here um, using the menu. I can either pick one or type in one. So let's go ahead and pick a thicker one. Not quite thick enough. Let's pick a little bit thicker one. And then now you can start to see that it is the exact same pattern a variable width if the stroke is actually thick enough to show it. So that's just a quick primer on the variable width tool, how it works, how you can drag out the points manually, and more importantly, how you can save those profiles of, those, of all the work you did and reapply them to other paths. That's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. This has been Illustrator CS5. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.